Hey y'all, it's Keegan here. I'm back with another video for you guys. And this is actually going to be my second and final video for today. And we're going to end it off with another edition of Keegan's Movie Reviews. So today's film we're going to be talking about is another film that I saw in theaters over the weekend. Well, I actually saw it in theaters last night, actually. Now, today's movie we're actually going to be talking about is something completely different from what I normally talk about here on the channel. This is actually going to be a a low budget independent film that I don't think any of you have probably have heard of because this is a film that's recently getting releases at different film festivals. It first had its world premiere at the Fantastic Film Festival in Texas about a month ago and last night around here in Edmonton it had its uh, premiere, Canadian premiere at the uh, Northwest Fear Festival last night at the Metro Cinema which was where I went to see this movie. And uh, I don't know how many of you have actually seen or heard of this movie before. And I don't, I couldn't really find any video on the cha on this website on anybody else talking about this movie. So I guess this technically makes me the first person to ever talk about this movie. Well, yeah. So anyways, that film in question is the 2023 independent horror comedy, The Last Video Store, which was directed by... Cody uh, Kennedy and Tim Rutherfield and uh, this film was released here in Edmonton on October 22nd 2023 which was uh, last night before we actually go any further I know I normally use a a film poster on the corner of the screen for what film I'm talking about however at the time of when this video was uploaded there was no official poster for this movie and on the IMDb page, there's only one picture of related to the film, and it's a shot from the movie. So I had no choice but to use this picture right here as the uh, little poster for this uh, review. So I hope I don't get a copyright claim from that for showing that in this video, but I think I should be okay. But just wanted to point that out that at the time of this video, there was no official poster for this uh, movie. So um, yeah. So I just wanted to point that out. Also, before we actually talk about the film itself, I want to give you guys a little bit of a backstory behind this movie. It's actually pretty interesting. Now, The Last Video Store originally started out as a series of short films that were made in the la made over over the past decade, and all of them starred Kevin Martin, who was actually the owner of a real video store here in Edmonton called The Lobby. Now, if you've been on my channel for a while, you probably have heard of this store. I've talked about it many times before in the past and bought a lot of my Blu-rays from there. And we've actually been inside the store in some of my vlog videos that I've done throughout this year. And uh, the two directors of this movie met Kevin at the in the store. And I think they both got an idea to make a series of short films that were all filmed inside the real store of the lobby. And they actually tried to make a feature length film before back in 2014, but I think the pro the original project of that was scrapped due to financial reasons, I believe. I'm not exactly sure what was the reason why the original the first attempt at making the film was scrapped, but I think it had something to do with like financial, but I'm not really sure. I could be wrong though. And then flash forward to 2022, the two directors and Kevin band together with, they got a crew and they got a cast and other film crews and they all finally got around to making the film and they finally made the film after a decade long creation and let's just say this was a film 10 years in the making. And uh, when I went to the movie last night, I actually went to the premiere. As you can tell, I'm actually wearing a t-shirt I got from the film, from the uh, screening. Not only that, but I also got this cool uh, handbag here. It's got um, Beaver Lake Massacre 4 Overtime Kills. This is actually an exclusive bag that they had at the uh, festival. And as you can tell, this is obviously a parody of uh, Friday the 13th Part 4 right there. It's, it's a really cool bag. And uh, not only that... I also got this really sweet poster of the film that I got from the festival. I can't remember who's the artist that made this really cool poster, but it's someone on Facebook that made it, and they uh, they did a really good job, and I hung it up on my wall. 
It's right next to that Twin Peaks Fire Walk With Me poster right there. And right below my 28 Days Later poster. But uh, yeah, that uh, that poster is really neat. So yeah, it was pretty interesting. Some interesting merch I got from the festival. From when I saw the film in the theater. But we'll get to more on that in a little bit in this video. But I we'll get to the storyline of the film first. And then we'll get into my thoughts. And the experience of uh, seeing the film in the theater was like... So anyways, until without further ado, let's take a dive into The Last Video Store. So, The Last Video Store follows a man named Kevin, who is played by Kevin Martin, who is playing a fictionalized version of himself in this movie. And Kevin runs a little video store called Blaster Video, which is, of course, a fictionalized version of The Lobby. And uh, the Blaster Video is your basically your average of video rental store where you can rent movies on VHS. And, um, one day, a young lady named Nia, played by Yaya Adams, which I think, I, I hope I pronounced that first name right, but I think I did. Anyways, Nia comes to the store with three videotapes to return. They actually aren't her tape that she rented, it was videos that her late father uh, rented, so after he died, she got a note asking to return those tapes with, a. Uh, no late fees, but the problem is the three tapes were not rewinded, and so she had to pay a three dollar and fifty cent tip. I mean, fee for not rewinding, because after all, there were rewinds fees back in those days. And however, Nia also gives Kevin a a strange looking uh, videotape that looks like something out of a uh, video drone a little bit. But little do they know that the uh, the obscure videotape is cursed and unleashes all the baddies from these 80s uh, B-movies into the real world. And it makes them trapped in a portal or something with the store. So Nia and Kevin are trying to fight off the enemies, fight off the baddies to survive. And without giving away too much, that's basically the story of the film in a nutshell. Now... For a low budget film that not a lot of people have heard about, I was really impressed with this movie. I uh, really, really, really enjoyed this movie. But I should start off by saying that it's not a film for everybody. You might like it, you might not, but I personally loved it. I thought it was hilarious, it was creative, and it definitely gets a lot of inspiration from a lot of movies from the 80s. It's got a lot of 80s movie, 80s movie references, such as Friday the 13th, Predator... Um, Indiana Jones and a couple of other movies from the 80s it definitely gets a lot of influence from those movies and it's got a lot of heart and it it's definitely like a little bit of a, th a callback to 80s movies and 80s video culture like video store culture back in the 80s and 90s which was really interesting and it kind of got me thinking of memories I've had going to uh, video stores when I was a kid like in the uh, 2000s. Although when I went to video stores when I was a kid. They didn't have VHS's. They only had DVDs, Blu-rays and games. Back when I went to those uh, kind of stores back in the day. But yeah. But I uh, really really enjoyed the film. It's not only that. But for a small budget film. I was actually really impressed with how well they were able to pull this movie off. All the people that were involved with it. And uh, for a B-movie, the performances were actually really good by B-movie standards. And it's definitely one of the most entertaining films that I've seen in 2023 in general. And it's definitely on my spot of my favorite films that I've seen this year. And for a, for a, a movie that started off as a, a series of short films, which, by the way, I actually haven't seen any of the short films that this movie is based on, but maybe someday I'll check them out. I thought it was really, really good. It basically comes full circle, I'd say. But I especially really like the editing style for the film. I love the synth vibe, and I just, I just love the vibe for this movie. My only uh, issue I have with this movie is that it abruptly ends right there but it kind of ends off for a possibility of a sequel but who knows maybe one day we'll get a sequel but i hope we get a sequel but yeah i i had a lot of fun seeing this movie in the theater 
But speaking of which, when I saw this movie in the theater, there was a big lineup because this was actually a sold out one night only screening and there was like a shit ton of people. There was like 500 plus people at the theater. So I had to wait in line outside before I can get in because the theater is pretty small besides the auditorium which has 527 seats. And uh, so when I got inside, I, um, I took around some vendors and I bought some stuff some uh, merch and uh, three Blu-rays and uh, one DVD that I showed in a video that I uploaded earlier today. And then after that, I got my popcorn, I got a beer and got my seat. And uh, before the movie started, there was an introduction from the filmmakers and the actors and actress that uh, all appear in this movie. And then after that, there was a little Q&A session and... Um, the people like this was kind of an emotional experience for the people that were involved because this was something I know this was like something that they wanted to get done like this was this movie was made with pure dedication and hard work and just all the effort that was put to this movie was really really well done and I just I gotta respect that like for a, a small budget indie film like it's one of the best uh, films that you probably never have heard of. But um, I don't really have a whole lot to say about this film. The Last Video Store is a great independent film that you probably never have heard of. And I highly recommend it if you haven't seen it. I will definitely see it again one day. But all in all, it was a fun film and a really well made film. And I guess it's safe to say a cult classic has been born. So anyways, I'm giving The Last Video Store an 8.7 out of 10. Well guys, that wraps up another edition of Keegan's Movie Reviews. I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. If you guys enjoyed it, feel free to leave a like, leave a comment below, subscribe for more videos like this, and turn on notifications and share the video with your friends, family, and whoever. And follow me on my other social medias, links are in the description down below. And um, yeah, so that's all I gotta say for this video. And until next time, this is Keegan Shepard signing off. Thanks for watching, hope you guys have a great day. And I'll, uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. And, uh, yeah, take care, everybody. Peace out. Bye-bye.